Today we find ourselves in Antwerp. This part of Belgium has always piqued our curiosity on countless train journeys, and today it's time to satisfy that curiosity. We just arrived here after a brief one hour train ride, and once we're done eyeballing this gorgeous train station, we'll try some local Flemish delicacies and exclusive Antwerp treats. Plus, we'll also nab an insider's look into the craft of the beloved Belgian beer. Goedemorgen and welcome back. Today, we're in Antwerp, or in Dutch, Antwerpen, which is a unique region of Belgium, the Flanders region, which also happens to be the Dutch-speaking area. This country is actually broken up into three different regions. There's Flanders, then there's Brussels, which speaks French and Dutch, and then there's also Wallonia, which speaks mostly French, but there's a little German mixed in there too. But first, let's get a vegan cinnamon roll. Y'all, we were on our walk to our first stop, which is to get coffee, and we smelled cinnamon rolls, and we came across this vegan cinnamon roll place that had really, really good reviews, so we had to get one. <laughs> Tell me that looks vegan. It doesn't. Mm -mm. No, it's less about the texture, and it's just missing, like, the buttery flavor, but I mean, this is I'm a really... I'm not missing it. This is a really good cinnamon yeah. roll. <laughs> we don't have this in the Netherlands. Outdoor city. Gorgeous. We're not eating a pizza. Sorry. We are at Raquette where we're getting coffee and you can also get breakfast and treats here too. After you do some yoga, we're skipping the yoga today and going straight for the coffee. We've never had the chance to explore Flanders before and I've heard the regions in Belgium are pretty distinct and I found that the best way to explore cultural differences in a country is through food. So let's start by eating lunch. The Arma Doubtful focuses on serving up traditional Flemish dishes, and we're hoping to try a few things here for the very first time. One of which is a Duvel, which I have never tried before, which is a traditional Belgian beer. I think the thing that's special about this is they ferment it twice. So once in the brewing process, and then again, once it's actually inside the bottle. That is a very strong flavor. It's good though. It's like very crisp and refreshing, but it's got a bite to it. I ordered the Volavant, which is a chicken ragu served with a puff pastry. It's basically a chicken pot pie, except instead of vegetables, there's meatballs and mushrooms. Both of our meals came with fries because, you know, Belgium. And Belgian mayo is so unique. It has more of a pop to it with mustard or vinegar mixed in there. And there was this lemon peel inside of the mayo too, which was confusing, but really good. The chicken was super tender and the sauce was creamy, but not too rich. It's a hearty meal and it was good to eat ahead of a long day of walking. And I got the pardon filet. Yep, that's horse steak, baby. It came with this really awesome pepper gravy. Horse is still served at restaurants and butchers in the southern part of the Netherlands, and it can be found here too. Horse, at least in my experience, is identical in flavor and texture to beef, but regardless, the steak was awesome. It was super tender and super peppery. I finished the whole thing and the salad. That was a very good meal. Really good. Really, really good meal. I don't think that Belgian food ever has disappointed us. <laughs> Actually, has yeah, so It's all very like hearty. It is very hearty. I mean, we did have a steak and basically a pot pie for lunch. But all right, now that we've got full bellies and we're caffeinated, uh, we also got the cinnamon roll. <laughs> I guess now it's time to actually see the sights and see around Antwerp. So let's do that. Oh my gosh, our next spot is closed, you guys. What happened? What are we gonna do? Actually, that's our next spot. This is the Cathedral of Our Lady. They broke ground for this church in the 1300s and it wasn't finished until like 200 years later. That's a very long construction project. Also, while this church is not a museum, it definitely contains a ton of works by Peter Paul Rubens, which I hear is quite popular. Maybe Paul we should Rubens? go. You mean Pee Wee? <laughs> You know, when I was looking it up, I was like, the, I wrote Paul Rubens first, and I was like, no, that can't be right. Peter Paul Rubens is different. <laughs> Nello and Patrasche are two characters from the English novel, A Dog from Flanders. They're actually here, taking a nap.
This is the Vlace House. It dates all the way back to the 16th century, and this is actually where like all of the butchers in the area used to work from. I think at one point there was like 65 butchers here, but they built this like beautiful place just to cut up some meat. And as you can see, it's quite popular here. We are at St. Anna's Tunnel, which connects one side of the city to the other where the city center is. This was built in 1931 and still has the original wooden escalators inside of it. Doesn't this remind you of something else? Like the Moss Tunnel in Rotterdam? Yeah. Yeah, let's see. All right. While we're walking this tunnel, maybe we'll talk a little bit about our initial impressions of Antwerpen. Yeah! I don't understand what most people here are saying when they respond to our terrible Dutch. Yeah, I like Which is really interesting, and I don't know if that's like a dialect. Oh, I know it's a dialect. Yeah, I agree. It's like, it's you hear little words, but you're like, what are you speaking? Anyway, the city is absolutely beautiful. Like, it is just, like, very cosmopolitan also, yeah. which I, I was not expecting. I expected it to feel like a smaller city, yeah. but it definitely feels really big and beautiful. It feels like a mix of, like, maybe maybe this is a controversial statement, maybe a little bit of, like, New York and the Netherlands combined, which is really fun. I really like, whoa, I really enjoy that. And the food, I mean, I already mentioned lunch was awesome. Well, lunch was awesome, but, yeah. Anyway, beautiful city. I'm excited to see more of it. Yeah, me too. Let's go. And we're out. We're back. We're back in the thick of it. Yeah. We just walked under that river. What? Isn't that crazy? What? That used to be a ferry, and I think those that's where the ferry used to come. Oh, is it does it not have a ferry there anymore? This is the Bravo Fountain. And the saga goes that there was a giant that used to live here along the river. And if you're trying to cross the river, he would make you pay a toll. And if you refused, he would cut off your hand. And Bravo came along and actually killed the giant. And that's the giant's hand in his hand, which he threw back into the river. Now, this story is so well known in the area that they've created a candy to commemorate it. So let's go give it a try. We are at Chocolatier Hosen's and we are looking for two things, the Antwerp Sahanja, and we are also looking for the Kuberdon. Let's see if we have them. So. Let's see if we have one. Well, I hope we have them. Let's see if <laughs> Let's, we have them. <laughs> yeah, after we leave. All right, let's find a place to try these. Hey, we're home. Forgive us, we really couldn't find a quiet place to have our chocolate that day. It was really, really busy. Antwerp Sahanjas can be a few different things. They can be a cookie, they can be a cookie covered in chocolate, or just chocolate, but they all have one thing in common. They're hand-shaped and they're a reference back to what we saw earlier at the fountain where the giant would cut off people's hands if they couldn't pay the toll when they're crossing the river. This isn't our first time trying Belgian chocolate. We tried a bunch of chocolates in our first Brussels video, but I have to shout out the chocolate shop that we went to because she was so nice. Look at that. So it's milk and dark chocolate. Mm -hmm. And it says Antwerp's uh, hand just on it. Oh, it does in case you're not Anjas. sure what you're eating. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> you're just eating some sort of I'm other go milk chocolate. hand-shaped chocolate. All right. Go with dark chocolate. Yeah. Eight smock lick. Eight smock lick. Oh, oh there's something that? inside. Oh. Whoa. It's weird because the filling is kind of gritty. So the first thing is you get like the strong chocolate flavor. Yeah. And then the inside is kind of gritty and it's kind like, of reminiscent of a fruit yeah i think it might be like a like vaguely amaretto oh that's like what a it cherry almond yeah yeah but it's not it's not super strong no flavor. no no i don't really like amaretto flavor but you're right it is something that it does just add a little bit to it it's not an overwhelming thing yeah i think i was just surprised because i expected to bite into it and it was going to be solid chocolate yeah me too i thought maybe it was hollow okay there's one last thing we have to do in this video michelle Tell us about Antwerp's famous Deconic Brewery. This brewery opened in 1833 and they're famous for their flagship beer, the Bolica. We're gonna learn a little bit more about how Belgian beer is brewed here and hopefully get a little tour and tasting. Let's go. The tour took you through five-ish different rooms with different movies about different topics ranging from the history of the brewery, how their beer is brewed, the importance of glassware, and also, no joke, 
what felt like a promotional video for Antwerp itself. Is this a window? Is yeah, this the window, yep. Oh yeah, the window. This place is a lot bigger than you think. We learned that Duval, the famous beer that we tried earlier, bought to Koenig in 2010, and that the glass that the Duval is served in is the source of its effervescence. You get two free beers as a part of the tour, the namesake de Koenig beer, a pale ale brewed using traditional Belgian brewing methods like open fermentation, and you also get to try the Triple Danvers, a blonde Belgian triple beer, which was remarkably light and refreshing even though it had 8% alcohol by volume. To be totally honest, if you come to Antwerp, skip the tour. It was mostly just walking around and watching recordings. Don't skip the brewery though, just get a drink or four here. And that seems like a good time for us to wrap up our time here in Antwerp. Thank you so much for watching with us today. By the way, this is our first time, like we mentioned numerous times in the video, that we've been in the Flanders part of Belgium. So what's the next city in Flanders that you'd like to see us visit? Let us know in the comments. As always, thank you so much for watching. And we'll see you on the next one. We. Ooh. Actually, do they, do they say something different here? I don't know. Oh, we should figure that out first.